Operations with decision height It should be stressed that the decision height is the lower limit of the decision zone during which, in limiting conditions, the CM1 will be assessing the visual references. CM1 should come to this zone prepared for a go around but with no pre established judgment. CM1 should make a decision according to the quality of the approach in the way the visual references develop as decision height is approached. A. CAT to operations In CAT to operations, the conditions required at decision height to continue the approach are that the visual references should be adequate to monitor the continued approach and landing, and that the flight path should be acceptable. If both these conditions are not satisfied, it is mandatory to initiate a go around. The visual references required at decision height in CAT to operations to continue the approach may be any of the following a segment of the approach light system, the runway threshold, the touchdown zone. B. CAT 3 operations in CAT 3 operations with decision height. The condition required at decision height is that there should be visual references which confirm that the aircraft is over the touchdown zone. Go around is mandatory if the visual references do not confirm this. CAT 3 without decision height for this category of operation, the decision to continue does not depend on visual references, even though a minimum RVR is specified, see operating minima. It is nevertheless good airmanship to confirm aircraft position with available visual references. However, the decision depends only on the operational status of the aircraft and ground equipment. If a failure occurs prior to reaching the alert height, a go-around will be made. A go-around must nevertheless be performed if the autoland warning is triggered below alert height, loss of visual references. A. Operations with decision height, before touchdown If the decision to continue has been made and the visual references subsequently become insufficient, for the appropriate category, or the flight path deviates unacceptably, a go-around must be initiated, a go-around initiated below the minimum approach break-off height, whether auto or manual, may result in ground contact. Note, if the touchdown occurs after go-around is engaged the autopilot remains engaged in that mode, an ATHR remains in toga. Ground spoilers and auto break are inhibited. B. Operations with and without decision height, after touchdown If the visual references are lost after touchdown, a go-around should not be attempted. The rollout should be continued with app in rollout mode down to taxi speed. Flight parameters deviation calls These calls would normally be made by the pilot non-flying and acknowledged by the pilot flying. However, any crew member that sees a deviation outside the above limits should make the appropriate call. If any of these limits are exceeded approaching decision height, a go-around should be considered. Failures and associated actions In general there are three possible responses to the failure of any system, instrument or element during the approach. Continue the approach to the planned minima. Revert to higher minima and proceed to a new decision height, above 1000 feet. Go around and reassess the capability. The nature of the failure and the point of its occurrence will determine which response is appropriate. As a general rule, if a failure occurs above 1000 feet AGL the approach may be continued reverting to a higher decision height, providing the appropriate conditions are met refer to downgrading condition. Below 1000 feet, and down to alert height when in CAT 3 dual. The occurrence of any failure implies a go around, and a reassessment of the system capability. Another approach may then be undertaken to the appropriate minima for the given aircraft status. It has been considered that below 1000 feet, not enough time is available for the crew to perform the necessary switching, to check system configuration and limitations and brief for minima. In CAT 3 Dual, in general, a single failure, for example one autopilot failure or one engine failure, below alert height does not necessitate a go-around. But a go-around is required if the auto land warning abnormal is triggered. Procedures, the abnormal procedures can be classified into two groups 1. 
Failures leading to a downgrading of capability is displayed on FMA and ECM with an associated specific audio warning, triple click. 2. Failures that do not trigger a downgrading of capability but are signaled by other effects, flag, ECM warning, ambicaution and associated audio warnings. It should be noted that some failures might trigger ECAM warnings, cautions and the downgrading of capability, above 1000 feet, downgrading conditions A, downgrading from CAT 3 to CAT 2 is permitted only if ECAM actions are completed, RVR is at least equal to CAT 2 minima, briefing is amended to include CAT 2 procedure and DH. Decision to downgrade is completed above 1000 feet AGL. B. Downgrading from CAT 2 to CAT 1 permitted only if ECAM actions are completed, at least one flight director is available, RVR is at least equal to CAT time minima, briefing is amended to include CAT 1 procedure and decision height. The decision to downgrade is completed above 1000 feet AGL. Note, switching from one autopilot to another before 1000 feet AGL is permitted. Below 1000 feet and above decision height, for CAT 2 or CAT 3 single, or above alert height, for CAT 3 dual, a go around must be performed in case of, alpha floor activation, loss of app, cavalry charge, downgrading of capability, triple click, amber caution, single chime, engine failure. At 350 feet radio altitude land must be displayed on FMA and runway course must be checked. If runway course is incorrect or land does not appear, a go around must be performed. If conditions permit, and according to airline policy, a CAT 2 approach with autopilot disconnection no later than 80 feet may be performed. Land is displayed if localizer and glide slope track modes are active and at least one RA is available. These conditions need to be obtained no later than 350 feet AGL to allow a satisfactory automatic landing. Depending on terrain profile before the runway land mode may appear at lower height. This can be acceptable provided it has been demonstrated that automatic landing is satisfactory. At 200 feet round below any auto land warning requires an immediate go around. If visual references are sufficient and a manual landing is possible, the PF may decide to land manually. At flare height if flare does not come up on FMA, a go around must be performed. If visual references are sufficient and a manual landing is possible, the pilot flying may decide to complete the landing. After touchdown in case of anti-skid or nose wheel steering failure, disconnect autopilot and take manual control. If automatic rollout control is not satisfactory, disconnect the autopilot immediately.